All right, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Slow weekend, huh? Yeah. Did you not do anything? No. You're pretty slow. Pretty slow. <laughs> Didn't do much. How long do we let it ride? I think we, yeah, let's let it ride. For a minute. For a minute. Am I in frame? Okay. Oh, All right, going? you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Okay, game time. Let's go. All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of King of the Court. I am your host, Tyler Lung, and we got Jimmy over here, another host. What does your What does your hat say? Just Just Jimmy M. I mean, had a had a very dear friend hook it up. Who sent so, you that? Can, I, I'm can not going to say, one? but look at. Can you guys see that? What yeah, is we're it? not going to answer that. We're going to reject that one. <laughs> Who was it? <laughs> it was. It was another podcast host who nobody watches his show, so we don't want to give him any clout because <laughs> nobody cares. All right. Welcome back to another episode. We have a very uh, jam-packed episode, and so hopefully we can get through everything without um, losing your interest. But first and foremost, we want to thank our sponsors. We got Pickler. Uh, Jimmy, tell us about Pickler. Who are they? Yeah, so Pickler is the premier luxury Indoor pickleball indoor facility. Pickleball facility. They've announced 80 new 80. locations across the world. You know what's crazy is I get so many messages being like, hey, where are they going to be in South Florida? Where are they going to be in Austin? Where are they going to be in, like, yeah. it's coming. We will get you locations as soon as we can. They're growing. It's insane. Pickler is, yeah. Awesome. Also, they have an e-commerce platform. So next time you go buy your paddle, your Vulcan, your Yola, your Paddle Tech, Selkirk, whatever it might be, go to the picklershop.com yes, and please. use code KOTC. You're not only getting a great product, you're getting great customer support, and yes. you're also supporting this guy and me over here. Yes, both of us. They also have... We um, need it. We need all the support we can get. Yeah. They also... I don't know if they carry all of them, but if you saw that, like the Black Bears Pro XR... Yeah, they have that. Yep. Um, I don't know if they have the breakers and the squeeze ones, but yeah, they do have the Black Bears Pro XR. So yeah, go check them out. Those are pretty sick. Like the team, yeah, the team issued ones. So. Picklershop.com. Use code KOTC. Uh, next, we got our trusty sponsors, Mod Balls. Mod we love balls. them. Delicious and healthy. Check them out at modballs.com. You won't regret it. We see a lot of you using the code. We appreciate that, and we know you guys are enjoying them. Um, yeah, check them out next. Jimmy, have you been wearing the new Acacia shoes? Yeah, I wear, I legit, every time I play, I wear those. I love them. Tell us about them. They are, they are light. They are super lightweight. They are lightweight. They, they look good. Yeah. They are actually very durable. Yes. Um, and they're designed specifically for pickleball yep. and that's the biggest thing about them. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I love them honestly, like. This is my second pair. I had the first version. Uh-huh. And now this version is they took it up even another notch. Yep. So. so this compared to the original one, they've uh reinforced the outsole. They've reinforced a lot of the uppers, and it's just a little bit more comfortable overall. I really like it. It's the shoe I've yeah. been wearing for almost the past year. Um, but yeah, check them out. Go to acaciasports.com and use code KOTC yeah. to get your next pickleball shoe. We had somebody order, I think we had a couple people. We've had a couple people people order them so yeah so like check them out go support support the pod but also get the best pickleball shoe on the market and then last but not least we got crown pickleball first sponsor of king of the courts yes we love them this ball has been sold <laughs> sold out a lot but i think they're getting more in stock yeah so i have a i couldn't find it but i had somebody actually message me a review on crown and they basically said that they were <laughs> cracking a bunch of balls they were getting out around and so they actually just pulled out a crown but they didn't tell anybody mm -hmm. and they played with it and at the end everybody was like dude we'd love that ball like what what was it yeah and they had no idea that they you know and so yeah crown and especially with the colder temperatures finally yes, colder temperatures um For normal sure. balls are going crack a lot more frequently yeah crown pick balls will not um they're going to last a lot longer so check them out and use code kotc to save some money yes jimmy as your hat says jimmy m yeah is plaid coming back Plaid? Plaid. I mean, it looks like you're rocking it. It looks like you're going to... Am I old school right I now? I mean, it's a little lumberjacky. Yeah. I like it. I like it. It looks good. What yeah. is what, what brand is that? I can't tell you. Why? You can't say it on the pod? You're, you're going to go buy it. 
I don't right. want you wearing cloud. There's no way they have plus sizes. I found this at a, a thrift store. You did. I bet you did. You just, just don't want to. You I just spent, don't want anyone I spent to look a lot of money on it. You know, there's that new Google thing where like they always tell you the cost. Like someone could take a picture of our pod, uh huh, and it'll take our clothes. Really? I saw a commercial. So they'll take a picture. Take a picture. Look right here. And it'll take our clothes and it'll link it to it. Wow. So if you want to know what brand this is, whatever that Google new Google app is, <laughs> it's sick, dude. It's cool. All righty. Okay. MLP. So, uh, first, yeah. uh, event of season two, yes. uh, just happened. So we had, let's start from the very beginning. There's a yep. little controversy. Yes. So there's all this talk leading up. Well, boycott, no boycott, merger, no merger. This player's not happy. This player's not happy. And day before the event, day before the event. rumors, rumors swirling all over the pickleball world, Julian Arnold, Lauren Stratman, they decide not to show up. Uh -huh. So now I happen to be privy to a little bit of information and essentially they sent texts to their owners and they lawyered up mm -hmm. and they said, we're talk not to the lawyer, talk to the lawyer, talk to I'm the not lawyer. responding to you guys anymore. Talk to the hand, the face don't understand. Yep. Did you ever used to do that? Yes. Yeah. So they lawyered up. They said, we're not coming anymore. Um, if you want to know why, call our lawyers. Mm -hmm. And it's the day before and they're not coming. And the wildest part about it is, is these two players, I'll just be really brutally honest. Brutally. Have the two biggest off-market outrageous contracts in all of pickleball based off of their results. Okay. It, it, I what, mean, what's, the num what's the number? Well, I mean, the numbers are north of <laughs> and I'll tell you that. Wow. For both, each, individually. Okay. And based off of the Mercedes they drove up in, I mean, they're already <laughs> spending that money. Um, and the Louis Vuitton bag and the Louis Vuitton sunglasses, they're living the high life. So hey. good for them. Do you? But the Love that stuff. But the point is, they weren't going to come. And they said, we're not going to play. Well, they didn't even say anything. They ghosted. They actually ghosted their teams mm -hmm. and said, call my lawyer. So the night before... Their owners finally get a hold of them, get on the phone, and it, it, it's the wildest thing. MLP ends up and PPA end up having to make more concessions to these two freaking overpaid people, anyways. How do you really feel? Well, I just think it's insane. Like they're trying to hold people hostage. Like who are you? Uh -huh. Like if Lauren Stratman doesn't show up, does do the ranchers do any better or worse? No, they sucked anyways, and she ended up ranked like forty seventh out of forty eight players. Okay. Like she was literally one of the worst ranked players of the weekend. And so you, and hold they were them. in group B or a group a. Yeah. So let, let's uh, maybe I'm, oh, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah. She was 47th. She went one in six. Okay. So you hold people hostage. You have this huge, and I get it. I'm sure there's, they released a statement, which was clearly written by their lawyer. Mm -hmm. And they basically said that they needed some language change in the contract. Or I'm not going to read the statement, some language change. And they needed to make sure certain things were taken care of. But I also know that they asked for additional accommodations and additional, we'll just say monies. Okay. Which doesn't actually mean always mean money. So this is kind of going back to one of the topics we talked about multiple episodes ago. Is this them being smart or is this them being kind of greedy? Just take, 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 well, take. I mean, I think it's both, but I think that they ended up getting what they wanted. So yeah. in the end they're smiling and they're happy and whatever. But, I think they're very happy, but I also think that they're officially like public enemy number one. And honestly, like I will give Julian, I don't, everybody knows how I feel about Julian. I think he's just very outlandish. And I think that he's a, not as good as he thinks he is, but I will give him credit. He balled out this weekend. Yeah. He absolutely balled out. He was insane. I had a question mark. I didn't know which Julian was going to show up. Yeah. I didn't know if he was going to be kind of checked out yeah. or if he was going to have something yeah. to prove. And he killed it. And I, there's nothing more to say, but he absolutely slayed it. Yeah. Julian played very well. He took a very average team to the playoffs. Yep. Lauren, on the other hand, buckled. Mm -hmm. and she should give every single penny that she earned back, go give it to charity, <laughs> go do something because Lauren just, I mean, there's no other way to say it, but she, if you don't make it out of group play, she shit the bed. 
if you don't make it out of group play, I actually don't think you make that much money. Yeah. Then so. she should give back her 2024 money too. She should give back every penny that she's ever earned playing pickleball <laughs> with how poorly she was played this weekend. In fact, we had an owner. So we asked a couple of owners about this okay. bef- before they you changed asked, their mind. You asked. Okay, not, I asked. Not us. You did. And this owner literally said... This is one of the great mysteries of the world why they're boycotting. This is obviously before they changed their minds. Nobody benefited from this turmoil more than them. They should be playing in ski masks because they freaking stole money. <laughs> but hey, take, with that being take sa- it a run. Yeah. Take it with a that run. being said, like you said, are they being greedy or smart? I mean, at the end of the day, they can we can say whatever we want, and they're driving away in their brand new Mercedes. It's a sweet car. Yeah. I mean, look good for, I mean, yeah, it's awesome. I I was uh, with Hayden and I had Hayden stand in front of it and Did I took a picture with, should yeah. we post it? Can we post it? Oh yeah. I think he, I think Hayden already showed, showed Julian. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, I mean, good for them, but Lauren, you didn't earn a penny this weekend and it actually looks worse when you go full diva like this and then you, then you just freaking shit the bed. Julian, he balled out good for Julian. Like Julian was like, Hey, this is what I'm worth. I'm the best player. I'm the, I mean, Julian, one of the Julian's complaints was that MLP didn't, they didn't, weren't making him the face of MLP because mm-hmm. he feels like MLP is made for him. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, he won it last year and he's an MLP guy. Yeah. And he went and proved it. Yeah. And he proved why he wanted the money that he wanted. So it's tough to argue with that. Um, but good. For, I mean, I guess Lauren's, you know, it's kind of the opposite of the Anna Bright, James Ignatowicz. Mm-hmm. Lauren's riding Julian's coattails, the big contract and James is riding Anna's, Yeah, you know, how do you feel about that? Cause there are a couple either family members or people who are dating and they kind of try to ride da- each other coattails and they try to package themselves. Yeah. The, the, the dating thing is stupid. Cause you're 21, 22 years old. But even if you're a family, I feel like, like you're paying for one person. You're not paying for the lower talent. Yeah, exactly. And we've seen it. I mean, yeah. we saw it. I mean, the Johnson fives, for instance. Yeah. Right? I mean, I mean, there was two siblings and then the rest were, they all trained together, but yeah. it's like, but why are you? It doesn't, make, all... it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, and also like these are really like critical life decisions. I feel like. Yeah. And you're kind of packaging yourself, you know. And I, I guess it worked out for them, but like, you know, like Millie Rain mm-hmm. got vastly overpaid. Like she got yeah. insanely overpaid out of this deal. Yeah. And so good for her for hitching herself to the right wagon, but yeah. but she was so overpaid, and she finished like one in six in Challenger. Mm-hmm. Like she was one of the worst Challenger players. Yeah. And, and I think it does put that target on your back. And if you're not prepared for that, you know, yeah. I just think, I just think it's, you. I just think it's interesting that, I mean, people are trying to package themselves. I mean, I don't think you see that much. Maybe you do in other sports like no. basketball, give me and my brother a contract or something like no, that. No, Like, I mean, there's always that talk like LeBron always made, had this talk how he wanted to play with Chris Paul and Carmelo Anthony and they all wanted to play together, but it never like yeah. really came to fruition. And then like, you know, there's always like, you know, Paul George was like, or Kawhi Leonard's like, I want to play with Paul George. And they, and you know, you go sign with these teams, but you've never seen, you don't very often see two players that are like, Hey, we're going to go together. I mean, maybe once in a while, but not like where they drive up the market price or not. And especially not five players. Yeah. So yeah, I I think it's, I think it's interesting. Um, All right, moving on. Um, Do you want to go through each pool or do you just want to talk about the finals or what do you want to do? Yeah, let's go through the pools real quick. But first, first, let's go to Challenger. Okay. Okay. So Jimmy, Jimmy, where were you last week? I was, listen, until somebody pays me, (laughs) this is not going to be my full time So I heard that there were multiple people who offered to pay you. They didn't offer to pay me. They offered to pay for certain things nobody offered to, to actually, reimburse you to actually pay me so come. what's your rate what we'll talk bucks about a day? it reach ten, out to ten me bucks a day reach out to me and i'll give you my I'll get rate. You a free meal reach out i heard that you didn't even pay for hayden's meal on his birthday hayden yeah where you did we to go chi- you took chi- hey, see what i paid for it we went to chick-fil-a did i paid for you it you bought hayden chick-fil-a for his 18th birthday i paid for it though four dollars no it was 28 total Oh my, you remember? Yes, I do remember. Well, you should, with that yeah. big $5 million contract. <laughs> should have got him more than that. Okay, so Did he listen. tell you that? He just told me that you went to lunch on his birthday. Yeah, but did he tell you that I did not pay? No, I just assumed okay. because I know I pay, you. I paid for him. I just know who you are. Yeah. All right, let's go real quick. I just want to talk about this really quick. So congrats to the Hard Eights. Winning challenger. Okay. 
Um, you know, dream breaker in the finals, dream breaker in the finals, you know, looking back at the draft, obviously, um, you know, I thought CJ Klinger was good, Mm -hmm. but I thought that he was a ways away from being really good. Mm -hmm. And the hard eights, you know, we had the same kind of motto with the same philosophy. I won't say motto philosophy where we were like, how good will they be in three months? Uh Uh-huh. Right. And we saw that with a few players in Premier and Challenger. And CJ Klinger in three months has just taken a massive step. Yeah. And I heard he's a junkie. I heard the guy, the kid Larry sits in his basement and he watches film and he hits balls against the ball. Yeah. And he just he's just a junkie. He's been playing a while. Yeah. He's he probably been playing at least five years, at yeah. least. Yeah. Probably seven or eight. Yeah. And he's getting yeah. bigger and he's growing into his body. He's getting yeah. stronger. And and yeah, he was honestly, he was the best player in Challenger. Yeah. And then Todd Folk. Our guy, Utah boy, Utah boy, Weber State alum. Yeah, right. Weber State, fight, fight, fight. Yeah, is that what they say? I don't know. Anyways, yeah. So they, those two, like in the player standings, were the top two challenger ranked players. Uh huh. And then it was like Yana, who again fell from premier to like second round of challenger. Uh huh. And then Eva. Yep. Is it Eva or Ava? I think it's Eva. Eva. I don't know. She's, she's tall and hits the ball hard. Yeah. Um, anyways, they were all top six. So you have four of the top six players. It's hard to lose. Um, but BLQK, your team, my team, my, me and Richie, I was nervous. Okay. Okay. I thought we had a good team. I thought the closer we got to MLP, we were getting better and better. Mm -hmm. Alex started having really great results in APP. Tina, I think everybody, all of a sudden, everyone in the world was like, oh, we knew Tina was going to be good. Bull crap. She went freaking the last pick of the first round. Yeah. And she would have gone fallen even further had we not taken her. Yeah. And everybody's like, no, no, we saw, we saw, of course, you know, <clears throat> there's certain freaking prognosticators who like to post novels on Facebook that <laughs> knew about it all along and all these people. But nobody, if they knew that, they would have taken her. Yeah. And, yeah, Tina's a freaking rock star. She balled out. Alex played great. Scarpa played great. Marshall Brown. And you guys got to you got a pool play. So and we lost got a in pool the play. We got a three seed. Yep. Which we lost in a Dream Breaker to Vegas. Uh huh. Um, Dream Breakers aren't our thing yet. Okay. Okay, but we we lost in a Dream Breaker to Vegas. Got out of pool play, and yeah, ended up losing to the fives in the in the playoffs. But I was super happy. I was pumped. Yeah. So you send them a text. Yeah, bro. I was yeah. I was fired up. Like that was big. Like, here's the thing. We won our very first match, and all I thought in my head was, thank goodness we're not Frisco. Yeah. Like, we are better than the Pandas. I'm not the worst GM in the history of pickleball. <laughs> and after that, every other win after that was good. And yeah. so, yeah, I think this team's just going to get better and better. Yeah. I mean, imagine where Alex, who's 18 years old, how, how, where will Alex be in November? Mm-hmm. You know, her jump from July to September was huge. Where is she going to be in November? Yeah. Where's Tina going to be in November after playing pickleball for a little bit longer? Right? Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I was I was excited about that. So moving on, Premier. That's what everybody wants to talk about. Premier is the best players in the world. The top forty eight players. Do you have um, the pools pulled yeah. up? Yep. So Group A. All right. Where's that at? Let's see. How do you see that? All right, so walk us through just um, kind of if anything stood out to you. Um, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, so Group A was the Squeeze, the Breakers, the Bouncers, and the Ranchers. Okay? Okay, I'm there. Yep. Okay. So, I mean, I mean, we started off with... <laughs> so going into this, I thought Orlando Squeeze was going to be good. Yeah. I thought Texas Ranchers were going to be good. Yeah. And I thought Bay Area Breakers could be, could be good. Yeah. So I, I mean, my predictions, if I, if I remember correctly, where the squeeze and breakers would come out of this pool uh-huh. and they did. Yeah. And no. you, huh. I, I thought the ranchers would have come out of that. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, I think the ranchers were, were solid, but again, Lauren Stratman did not bring it. She didn't bring it this weekend. And it could have been because of the distractions. It could have been all these other things. Yeah. It could have been because they literally didn't decide to play till the night before. Yeah. There, there was lots of things, but I also felt like the breakers um, I mean, they have that, you know, Rafa's pretty solid when it comes to MLP seems to be his thing. Although I don't think that we saw quite MLP Rafa this week. But uh-huh. He was pretty solid, but Connor Garnett continues to get better. Yeah. And Leia and Etta, I mean, Etta went five and oh on day one. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, the squeeze end up, end up coming out of that pool. Um, they went undefeated. 
I believe. Okay. Yes. Um, and then the bouncers, I think everybody across the board thought would be the worst team. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately they proved us all right. Um, do you think they make changes? So in premier you're able to trade, but you cannot drop. You can't drop, but who, who, okay. Like, let's just call it, let's call it what it is. Mm-hmm. So Pablo went zero and six, mm-hmm. right? Do you trade Pablo for somebody else? I think someone would probably take a, would take Pablo just because he's lefty. Cause he's yeah. a lefty. And I think that like, you're like, okay, well let's yeah. just change up the mojo a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that's very possible, but is anybody going to, how trade? did Simone and Paris do? I didn't follow them. So Simone and Paris. Um, so they ended up losing to Leia and Etta when they played the breakers. They actually, let's watch, look at their next one. And then they, Oh, they lost, they lost big to Anna Rohrbacher. Yeah. That's right. 21, 14. And then they beat Georgia and Lauren Stratman. Gotcha. Which everybody beat Lauren Stratman this weekend. <laughs> Other than the MLP owners, you guys lost to Lauren Stratman <laughs> by paying her extra. Um, I can't laugh because then that makes me agree with you. Yeah, see? I'm you're, not laughing. You're culpable. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Paris and Simone finished, like, way down the list. Both of them were, were – I think Paris was, like, 35, but Simone was super low in the player standings. Okay. Um, so, here's the thing. Like, what do you do? You trade Pablo. I think that's possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, say you trade Pablo for Rettenmeyer, mm-hmm. right? Now you have Pablo and Dylan. Mm-hmm. Does that make Atlanta better that they have Rettenmeyer? I don't know about Atlanta, but I think it would make the other one better. It would. Because then, lefty. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, does anyone, like, I'm not trying to be a dick, but does anyone want Hunter Johnson? Do you trade Hunter Johnson for somebody? I don't know if he's played with other players out there. Might yeah. have a little bit of chemistry but, with somebody. But who but, has he played? I don't think he has. No. I mean, and does Paris even allow that? Hopped or is there another up. female that takes a flyer on, on Simone? Yeah. Right. Another team that's like, Hey, we feel like, you know, this could be, could be a little bit better. Also, this was the first, uh, event with yeah. these new teams. So, so it's so, tough to make any like yeah. really quick, hasty yeah. decisions. Yeah. And there was a lot of like, there's a lot leading up to it. Yeah. A so, lot. so there's a lot of distractions there too. Yeah. So I almost think you have to give it one more event, but yeah. I would have, I told you at the draft, I told the bouncer GM in the elevator at the draft party. <laughs> did I not? You were there. You did. And I told her straight to her face yes. that she did not. I think it a, was more to her side face. Okay. Well, kind of in the well, elevator. well, there's a lot of people in the elevator, yeah. but I told her she didn't have a good team. She yeah. knew. I told her that yeah. she's like, you don't like my team. I said, no, I don't. It's bad. Yeah. And I wasn't wrong. So anyways, so yeah, good for them coming out of that one. It was breakers who I actually thought played, played pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, Edda, the first day was amazing. The second day she struggled a little bit, but the first day Edda played great. And then the squeeze come out of, come out of group a. So moving on to group B. Okay. Um, this was the, what people called the death group. Yeah. Yep. The group of death, like they say in, in soccer. So, so initially had, I thought DC would come out. Yeah. And then to, oh man, I actually thought Dallas or Utah. So I thought Utah would come out of this group. Uh-huh. Um, I just felt like they were that Annalie. Yeah. Irene is really usually pretty good in MLPs. Mm-hmm. Thomas and AJ. Yeah. And I thought, okay, this team could, could, I thought Utah was going to be really good. In fact, I thought at the draft that Utah probably had one of the best drafts. Mm-hmm. And, and then I obviously picked DC to come out of this. I picked DC to win the whole thing. And yes. Yep. And you were almost there, second place. I was almost there, but here's the problem: yep. I made a huge, massive critical mistake. What was that? You don't bet against Ben Johns. Okay. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with them taking second, but no, but it has to do with Utah not coming out of this pool. Okay. Yeah. Because Ben willed his team to come out of this pool. You know, Ben finished number two in the player rankings overall. Like he's that's right incredible. There. Like with yeah. I mean, there was a moment where Eric Lang took over. I don't know if you saw that men's match. I heard about it. Yeah, where Eric Lang just went freaking nuts. And then he has to play mixed right after. And you're like, oh, there you are, Eric. (laughs) There you are. Yeah. That's why everyone thought Tardio should have been drafted over you. But with that being said, I just, yeah, I mean, the slice, Ben Ben is just too good. Ben is tough. Because Lacey Schneeman was was the worst ranked player Mm -hmm. in all of MLP. Yeah. And he still took that team to the playoffs. Yeah. Like she was the, she's dead last. Yeah. She's, she's below Hayden who only played two matches. Yeah. 
Well, did he did didn't even receive a ranking? Because I think he, they only do it if you receive, if you play. In yeah, league. he did. He okay. did. He's like, right. I mean, he's near the bottom too, okay. just because he went 0 and 2. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, she, I mean, Pablo went 0 and 6. Yeah. And Lacey Schneeman is worse. Lacey Schneeman went 2 and 9. Gotcha. Um, and yeah, so she's, she's the very bottom of the player rankings and Ben still took that team to the playoffs. I yeah. think that's impressive. So DC and, um, Chicago come out of that. Come out so of that their, pool. their pool was really weird. And I know that, um, Dallas pickleball club. Yeah. They, they were in a really weird situation where they had to win one match and then these different scenarios had to happen. And it almost happened where they, they went one and two and they still almost came out of the pool. Yeah. Play. And actually some of their players thought that they did make it out of, out of the pool play. So, so that, yeah. So there, it was weird because I, cause I always thought that the tiebreaker was based off of net points or whatever. Yeah. And they, it looks like they had changed it. I think so. Yeah. The tiebreaker was changed a little bit. So yeah. yeah. And also <clears throat> the other thing that was weird is when they did the, like some of these playoffs were weird. Like in the challenger playoffs, mm-hmm. usually it's three versus six and yeah. four versus five, mm-hmm. but they did three versus five and four versus six. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Which was also weird. I don't know who, who made those decisions at Brooks. Is that uh, your thing? Because why would three have to play five? There's no event. Adva- like you should get an advantage for being the three seed. Yeah. And then four playing six. So yeah. there's, Anyways, I thought that was a little bit weird unless this is like a PPA thing where it's like, oh, three and four are the same. Yeah. Um, but here's the crazy thing, dude, is Dallas Pickleball Club. Mm-hmm. So on paper, they were drafted by Dave Fleming. Mm-hmm. On paper, you're like, okay, they have James Ignatowicz. Mm-hmm. They have Callie Smith, Elise Jones, Jay de Villiers. Yeah. There, there's big names there. Mm-hmm. They should have taken me. Then it'd be three of us in Utah. Yeah, they should. Well, no, you don't want to be on that team. <laughs> um, so you look at, you have these big names. You think that they're going to be solid. I thought they would be a two and two type team. Mm-hmm. And I know that they played in like a very tough, yeah. tough group, but Callie went three and three overall. Jay went three and three. Okay. James Ignatowicz and Elise Jones went one and five. James yeah. Ignatowicz won one game in the, the entire time. Like you're a first round pick mm-hmm. and you won one game. Yeah. Like that's, that's rough. <clears throat> yeah. Like you got to do better than that. And that's, and that's why they, they were bad. I mean, he, his point percentage is actually one of the lowest. I think it is the lowest 44.2% of doubles points. One is dead last. So why do you think that is? Is it the format? Is it these players aren't playing well? Is it something else is going on? So I think the format matters for okay. sure. I think that there is there is a little bit of that. Um, I think the rally scoring, I think rally scoring is just not built for everybody. And I think that James is a big risk, big reward player. Mm-hmm. And he's streaky. Yeah. Right? And the reality is, is he's, if you're a big risk, big reward, you're going to miss shot a few mm-hmm. shots in a row. And that costs you way more yeah. in rally scoring than it does in, in traditional side out scoring. Um, and yeah, I mean, he, you know, I don't, he didn't play great with Jay. I mean, they lost the, I mean, look at these scores. They lost 21, 17 to Ben and Eric Lang. Mm-hmm. And then him and Elise lost 21, 15. I watched that. I thought they were actually winning. Like all the points I watched, it seemed like they were winning and yeah. the score said otherwise. Yeah. And then they lost to Riley and Alshon 21, 16, which by the way, remember when he came on our pod and he bragged about how he'd never lost to Alshon? Does yes. this count? I don't know. MLP. I mean, I bet Alshon counts it. Definitely. Yeah. And then Jade and Riley beat him in Elise 21, 14. Um, and then he got his one win, which was 22-20 over Thomas Wilson and Kyle Yates, who was subbing for AJ. Yeah. So that makes it tough, too, because it's like your one that win. That was the last match, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so your one win, came, and and both teams were out of it. Well, yeah. Dallas still had a weird outside shot, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then, but then he goes and loses to Thomas and Irina, 21-15. Mm-hmm. So him and Elise got just smashed and mixed. They were never even close. Yeah. So, but does this mean that, that's the other thing, like, we talk about couples mm-hmm. like this shows kind of the benefit he has from playing next to Anna. Yeah. Right. Like, and it also shows how important partners are. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So anyways, uh, moving on group C group C let's see. Right? That's the Tyler yeah. Lung group. Okay. So I thought that Miami and Brooklyn would come out of this, but I thought that it was going to be, it was going to be tough because I didn't, I'll be honest. I didn't think on paper, Arizona was that great. 
And then we didn't know if Julian was coming. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people thought maybe Tardio would step in for Julian there. Yep. Uh, or they'd have to get a sub. And in Miami, Mary Brasha pulls out. Mm-hmm. She's got mono or I think. Yeah, something like that. Kissing too many boys, <laughs> Mary. Um, and then they bring in, instead of waiting, this is what's crazy. Mm-hmm. So they could have waited. Yeah. And they could have pulled out. Allison sub. Harris, Harrison or Harris? Harris. Harris was on the alternate list for alternate. Challenger. She never even yeah. got, she never even got drafted yeah. in Challenger. Now, but if you've watched Allison Harris, yeah, she's good. She plays with Andre Mick. Uh-huh. I watched, and I think it was an APP in Newport. They got to the finals, uh-huh. um, and she played well. Like yeah. she, she's solid. She, yeah, she, I played against her uh, actually two times now, but yeah, she's a good player. Yeah, and so I heard that she practiced with Tyra uh-huh. on like Thursday. Yeah, they Wednesday. were they were practicing the whole time, so yeah. they knew that they were choosing her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they took her, and they yeah. freaking just said, "We're going to ride with her." Yeah, and honestly, she played well. Like she did, she she played pretty solid. Yeah. Like the numbers aren't going to look great at the end of the day, but mm-hmm. they got to the playoffs. They had a chance. Um, so yeah, out of this group, Miami comes out of this group. Now you guys had interesting. So the very first match, let's talk about this first, <laughs> yeah. first match of all of premier league MLP <laughs> and on center court on center court is <laughs> Brooklyn versus Miami. Yeah. You versus Tyson. And do you know who's uh DJing or commentating? No tropical. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole thing is just fire. <laughs> Everybody is fired up. Everybody's pumped. Yeah. Um, you got Johnny Goldberg chirping over there, which is weird for a coach to chirp. Oh my gosh. I yeah. don't know if that's like, that's kind of weird. Like if you're a coach, like shut up. Name one other sport where a coach can essentially harass the other players. Yeah. That's weird. Like I mean, during the play. Yeah. That was weird. Yeah. I think that's weird when that, that coaches are chirping, like go coach your team. I mean, it's fine to do that, but if you have that title as a coach, yeah, like you talk a lot of stuff, a lot yeah, of stuff, but sure. you've been at tournaments and I haven't really seen you. I don't chirp, chirp. during. No, no, matches. I don't chirp at tournaments like that. I'm not a player, dude. I'm not yeah. good enough to be a player. Yeah. I'm not a player. Yeah. And like, I'll let the players do the playing on the, on the, yeah. yeah. But it was, yeah, just kind of interesting. He's standing over there just yeah. So you know what's crazy is like in football. Like, so I am a football coach. I uh-huh. coach a few, you know, coach for a few years now. If an opposing coach talks to one of our players, yeah, that's like that's like the number one unwritten rule. Yeah, like you do not talk to the opposing team's players. Yeah, and we've had a few times where like there's like a pile up near the sidelines, and the other coach will say something, or one of our players will get a penalty and they'll say something, and like literally, like it it's caused fights. Yeah. And so it's weird for an opposing coach yeah. to chirp at other players at any level. I'm mean, talking NFL, basketball, anything, yeah. NBA. Like you, they just you don't yeah. chirp at opposing teams players. Yeah, and especially if you want to hold that title as a coach or GM or owner or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. So um, um, moving on. Yeah. yeah so, so we were so center court. Center court. Yep. It was pumped. The packed house. Yeah. It was loud. A lot of people. I heard a lot of people cheering for you. Uh, Miami probably had more for and sure. I would say yeah, yeah Miami. I mean, yeah. it was, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. And so you guys play that very first match. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't your best. No, no. You, I, I felt like I played a little bit below average. Yeah. yeah. So you didn't put a little bit of a rhythm towards the end and yeah. then it was like, it's rally scoring route. Yeah. <laughs> so they take the first one, second game, mm-hmm. Tyra and Allison, Allison's first time. Yeah. And Coop and Catherine, it was a battle. Yeah. Ended up being 27, 25. Yeah. I mean, I think with the rally scoring, I thought we were, I can't remember, but I thought we were up like 2017 at one point. And yeah. then with the rally scoring, like you said, it yeah. just got really close. Yeah. Goes 27, 25. Yeah. And then Hayden, now you got Hayden and Coop battling Fed and Tyra. Yeah. And again, 22, 20. Yeah. Fed and Tyra pull it out. So now you step onto the court. Mm-hmm. You and Catherine. Yep. Tyson and Allison. Yep. You got to win to push a dream breaker. Mm -hmm. And it was, I mean, you guys go back and forth, back and forth the whole match. Yeah. And there was a point where I believe it was, I think you got, I think they had a match point on you. How many did they have? I think someone said four to six, somewhere in there. Yeah. We'll say five. So they have a match point on you and you and Tyson hits. I think he hits like a, he gets like a little bit of an overhead Uh and you hit a tweener. I do tweener, like a tweener reset. Yeah. It was and, fun. And then you end up like staying in the point uh-huh. and winning the point. Yeah. Like, was that the best, like in that moment? Yeah. 
that's gotta be one of the best shots you've ever hit, right? Considering the stakes and yeah. that moment. Yeah, that, that and one it was, was pretty sweet. And here's the thing: this isn't a Christian Alshon tweener. It yeah. was a necessary yeah. tweener. Yeah, like it wasn't showboating or any like you yeah. had. Yeah, no, that was pretty sweet. I think it was to give us match points. Oh, maybe I that's think what it was, was to it was give tied. us match yeah. points. Yeah, so it was tied. Yeah, and then we won the next point. Yeah, and then you won the next yeah. point. You guys win it. You push yeah. it to a dream breaker. Yeah, and, and the reality with Miami, like we can just call it, Miami, is built for dream breakers. Yeah, they're a tough team. You got Fed I mean, and Tyson. Yeah, yeah, you have Fed and Tyson. You have Tyra who beat yeah. Annalise, so clearly she's no slouch. And then Allison held her own. She did fine. Yeah. And so, yeah, they end up beating you guys in the Dream Breaker. But, I mean, what a way to start the weekend. MLP's nuts. AZ, yeah. they smashed Miami. Yeah. We go three and two against Miami. Yeah. AZ and Miami... Yeah. Both make it to the semis. But you beat AZ. Exactly. With Tardio, without Hayden. <laughs> exactly. So you guys get a sub because yeah. Hayden has to pull out because... Yeah. MLP's wild. I yeah. mean, you have a lot of people who you think will do well, yeah. play awful. You have people who yeah. you think will do bad, play great, yep. vice versa. Yeah. And here's what's crazy. Like, talking about AZ, okay? Uh-huh. They crushed my... They beat... Fed and Tyson, 21-13. Yeah. Julian and Deckel. Yep. Vivian Glosman and Vivian David uh-huh. won 21-12. Yeah. And then Vivian David and Julian Arnold win 21-10. Yeah. Like, and then, oh, and then Tyra and Fed actually won, but they went 21-12. So that was the only match I saw, like, where there was, nothing was close. Yeah. I mean, we're talking 10-point spreads almost in every game. Yeah. <clears throat> which is crazy. So, so they advanced. So now we have Miami. Also, real quick, Columbus, I, I didn't, I didn't know what to think about Columbus because my issue with Columbus was, Everyone loved the J Dub pick, mm-hmm. but everybody also knows how I feel about Colin. Yeah, and in an NLP format, I just struggle with Colin playing. He has to play mixed. Yeah, do you know what Colin did in mixed? I'm sure you'll tell us right now. Should we? Should we? Let's see. So Colin, Johns. So they played Julian Arnold and Vivian David and against to Arizona. To preface this, Megan was playing the first day, and then, Megan Dizon, and then she pulled out the she second got day. She got sick, yeah. right? And pulled out the second day. Yeah. So Colin and Megan lost 21-14 mm-hmm. to Julian and Vivian. That was the first day. Then they played Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And wildly enough, the only loss that Columbus had against you guys mm-hmm. was Colin and Megan, 21-14 to mm-hmm. you and Catherine. In mixed. Weird. Yeah. And then they played Miami, and Colin and Tina Pisnick lost 21-12. So Colin Johns lost 21-14, 21-14, 21-12. Have I proved my point yet? <laughs> Have I? And in men's, he did fine. Like, he did he They did played well. Great. Him and J-Dub played well. Yeah. But, I thought they were going to be... So, I mean, everyone... Well, not everyone, but a lot of people thought that they were going to be very low energy, low emotion. And I think they were... The players were kind of like that, but they had a coach. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Um the guy in Texas, you were talking, you've talked to him. Um, buff dude, Ryan. Yeah. Him. Oh yeah. I think he was the coach and he was doing a lot of energy. He was Yeah. pickle bald. Yes. Him. Yeah. 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 So he, he, he was coach coach or GM. Though. I don't know. One okay. Or the yeah. Other. Yeah. But he does. He's a but high He was providing guy. the energy, but yeah. the players were pretty quiet. Yeah. He's a high energy guy. Yeah. And I think that's good for them to have. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so Miami comes out of that. Um, you guys, Ended up be, that's what's crazy. Like we just said, you well, beat Arizona. Tardio and Coop, they were up 20 to 15 or 20 to 16. Uh-huh. And so they had multiple match points, multiple match points. And had they won that, we would have gone to a dream breaker in which they had just lost a dream breaker to Arizona the match before. Oh, yeah. And so, I mean, literally one point changes the whole scenario quite a bit, but as is, as yeah. is life. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so we head into the playoffs. But I think it's funny. A lot of people were talking about how tough all the teams were in Group B, which they are. But two of the semifinalist teams came from, came from my group, yeah, which I thought was really yeah, random. Exactly. I mean, and so yeah, so we go we go to the playoffs, and the Breakers play Arizona, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, same thing. It was just it was just a battle back and forth. You know, Vivian David is just solid. She's just, she's just as solid as it gets. She mm-hmm. she makes balls. Yeah, that's the best thing to say about her. I thought Glosman was decent. Her player rating is actually very low. She's one of the lowest rated players. She was, I think, other than Lacey Schneeman, she was mm-hmm. the lowest rated female. Um, it was like when she played, it, it was just, maybe it's what to expect from a newer player, but it's like when she played well, she played really well. I think she deals with what a lot of people deal with, especially her being new, is just uh, confidence. Yeah. Um, when she was 
confident. She was playing extremely well. When she was low, she was missing a ton of balls. Yeah. And against us, she I don't think she had a lot of confidence. Yeah. We had a lot of fans there, and I think that may have gotten to her head a For little sure. bit. For sure. Well, what's crazy is breakers went up 2-1. Uh-huh. Right? So they lose the men's match. And then the women, Etta and, and Leia, win 24-22. And then Rafa and Leia end up beating Glasman and Dekel. Mm-hmm. You know, there's yeah. like 21-18. And then they go to the they go to the last mix match, and it's Etta and CG against yeah. Vivian. And you lose 25-23. Okay. So which would have won it for the breakers. So they pushed to the dream breaker. And Arizona just, which is crazy because I felt like on paper – Bay Area was better yeah. on paper, and Arizona just got caught yes, fire. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. And they roll it. So Arizona wins that. So now you go slice in Miami and same exact, almost the exact same situation. Tyra and Allison win. Ben and Eric Lang freaking win a. That, go watch that match. Go watch Ben Johns and Eric Lang against Tyson and Fed. Mm-hmm. The level of play was just insane, and the consistency between those guys. Yeah. It was wild. That match is worth worth a rewatch. So they end up winning 28-26. Mm-hmm. Ben and Jesse pull out a close one. And this is like what you said. Everything's close. 23-21. And then Tyra and Fed win 22-20. Mm-hmm. So now it goes to the Dream Breaker. And this is where the Dream Breaker, the team that's better built for the Dream Breaker, actually yeah. comes through. Because Miami, they I would say... Next, I would say Miami's got to be one. Breaker's got to be two when it comes to Dream Breakers. For sure. And Miami ends up winning 21-14. I mean, you, yeah. you know, you have Jesse on that side. You have Lacey. Eric Lang is not a singles guy. No. <clears throat> and so, yeah, they end up winning it yeah. to advance. So now we get to the semis. And the semis were were crazy. This is, I mean, the squeeze, I felt like the squeeze were close to losing multiple times this week. Yes. And they just, for whatever reason, it was like they just seemed to to hang on. And the same thing happens, right? So Anna and Rachel. I was surprised it was so close with Arizona. I thought they would have uh, won a little bit easier, to be honest. Yeah, but I mean, they ended up, you know, ends up like the same thing. Goes to Dream Breaker, yeah. shocker, and the squeeze again are are built very well for Dream Breakers. I mean, Zane Andre Deescu was who knew he? I mean, I think most people knew he was good at singles, but mm-hmm. he oh, played. he's very good at singles. Yeah. yeah. He used to do singles a lot, but I don't think he plays. Yeah, much now. exactly. And he was, I mean, yeah. he was insane. Zane, obviously, yeah. you know, probably better at singles than he is at doubles. Yeah. Um, and then Anna Bright, of course, has a great background in Rohrbacher. Mm-hmm. Should we talk about Rachel Rohrbacher? Talk about her. Like that, when she was drafted, mm-hmm. it was like a hundred percent upside pick. Yeah. And I think people questioned it, but they also thought, you know, if she ends up being good, then it's it's a home run pick because that's a pretty solid team otherwise. Yeah. And who else do you take in the fourth round in that spot? I mean, the talk was Glosman, right? Yeah. She was really the only other player. Yeah, I mean, you could look at Glosman, Piznik. Piznik, Susanna Yana. Barr, Yana. Yeah. Yeah. But Rohrbacher just yeah, had crazy, ended up having crazy success. Yeah. She was really, really good. So, yeah, Orlando pulls that one out. And then in the other semi... Miami versus DC. That ma- that was over in 40 minutes yeah. or less. DC just rolled. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jade and Jackie were unbelievable all week. Mm-hmm. I mean, those two are just, I mean, they're just solid. Yeah. And so, yeah, they, they crushed Tyra and Allison. Who's, who's the better one? Um, It really depends on what, on what like, you're truly like what style because jade has a big which one has more success which one has more wins i think jade has more wins but Uh jade also got to play with riley gotcha jackie had to play with christian gotcha um but yeah they rolled them and then christian and riley end up beating tyson and fed and then christian and jackie crushed tyson and allison yeah so now we got the finals so this is i mean this just happened we're recording this literally as the finals end yep so i was kind of watching and I was getting a lot of texts from people saying, oh, this is going to be over so quick. Yeah. DC was up two to nothing D- within. So, so Jade and Jackie minutes. win 21 16 in literally like a 10 minute match. Yep. And then Alshon and Riley win 21 12 in yep. probably like an eight minute match. Yep. And then they go up like eight four or something like that in the first mixed match. Mm-hmm. And they, and Christian, they're on fire. Mm-hmm. And 
Andre and Anna battle back. Yeah. I think it was like 11, seven. And there's when they did the side change and then they battle back, they get it to like 12, 11, 13. Now they go back and forth. So both sides had match points mm-hmm. or had game points. Yeah. But Christian and Jackie have a match point mm-hmm. to win the entire, to win the entire thing. MLP. Yep. Yeah. And the Christian ends up hitting a ball long. Um, and he was playing insanely well yeah. that whole match. And then when it got to like the last couple of points, he just melted down. It was almost like he tried to do too much and he just freaking melted down and he, and there's no other way to say it, but he choked. Mm-hmm. He, he absolutely choked. Mm-hmm. And so Andre and Anna won that, but now you're like, okay, well that that's fine. But now we have Riley and Jade mm-hmm. who I don't know if Riley and Jade lost all weekend, you know? Yeah. And so now you have those two going and you're thinking that they'll be fine. And freaking Zane and Rohrabacher. Zane played the best probably mixed match of his life. Mm-hmm. And they just battled and they grinded out points and they just ripped balls and they and they ended up pulling out a close one, 22-20. And that's where the momentum shifts because yeah. the whole advantage that DC had leading up to that is gone in that dream breaker. Yeah. Because the squeeze, not only that, but your energy, your energy, your momentum deflated. Yep. I mean, you were up two zero and you just let a team come back from well, the squeeze end up winning it. <clears throat> so Zane Navratil, Andre Deescu, Rachel Rohrabacher, Anna Bright. All right. Side question. What are your thoughts on the celebrations and kind of the interview? So it seems like pickleball in some instances is starting to become uh, wild I don't know, just a little bit more uh, outspoken. I don't don't know if that's the right terminology. I I think here's, here's my thought. Okay. I think if you're going to do an interview and you're going to say crazy outlandish things, like I don't have any issue with it truthfully, but the problem is, is some of these players, it's way too forced. Mm -hmm. It's not like a natural thing. And so it comes off as cringy Mm -hmm. and it comes off as like weird and forced. And it's not, it's not like, natural to them uh-huh. right like like to compare like travis kelsey mm-hmm. travis kelsey of the chiefs you interview that guy and he's gonna say something wild and off the wall and and crazy but it's very natural and that's who he is and it's funny and if you listen to their podcast or you follow him at all like that's just who he is mm-hmm. where some of these players are trying to like i don't want to use the word controversial i just think they're like trying to just be yeah. liked and it just comes off. Some of it's just bad. Yeah. And it's, it's rehearsed. That's the thing. I mean, like everyone's talking about Zane saying that Rachel was Rafa's daddy. Right. Uh-huh. While it was, it was funny. I get it. But Zane asked to be interviewed. Mm-hmm. Like Cameron Blackwood was like, Oh, you want Zane asked? Mm-hmm. Cause it was rehearsed. And he, you know, yeah. like maybe not rehearsed is the right word, but he, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like off the cuff. Like he yeah. literally was like, Oh, I'm going to say this. Do you think that this is good for the sport? I think rivalries are always good. Yeah. But like this type of behavior, <laughs> this type of chirping, like coaches chirping at players, this, this type of, uh, commentary after I, matches. I mean, I don't, I don't hate it. Here's my, here's my issue with it. Uh, not really my issue, but what I think is weird is why does it only come out in MLP? Bingo. Like this yep. MLP do that. This MLP, um, like do they promote that environment? Yeah. Right? Do they? Do people just think, oh, it's MLP? That that's what's expected of us in yeah. MLP. Like and you'll so, literally be playing against somebody, and they miss a return, yeah. and their fans and those players will go crazy. Yeah. And these are the same players that are playing in PPA tournaments, and they do the exact same stuff, and they won't even smile or flinch or anything like that. Yeah. Like their entire demeanor changes one hundred percent, and some of the players uh, during MLP. Yeah, and that's what's that's. I guess that's what I'm. I'm not. I'm not sure why it changes. Like uh-huh. why. Why most of these players, you know, I, just MLP brings it out of them. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, honestly, like, I don't know why it happens in MLP. Um, and maybe that's because that was the environment that MLP originally created at the beginning. And that's kind of what they is, wanted. It's a team event. And so no matter yeah. what team events, they're going to be a little bit more energetic. Yeah. Um, but it's just really interesting to me. I mean, you see players sticking their tongue out, pounding their chest, staring down their opponents, saying stuff to their opponents. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I just played you last week or I'm playing you next week and you're not going to do this. You didn't do this last week. Yeah. Like, why are you doing this all of a sudden? Yeah. It's really interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think that it brings out 
a different side of people. Yeah. Like I said, I don't hate it. I just, I just think that it's interesting that it only comes out, Yeah. you know, in, in MLP. Yeah. Also just because we talked about it, Riley and Jade, mm-hmm. 21, nine, 21, 14, 21, 12 were their three mixed matches mm-hmm. previous to the finals. Yeah. They were crushing people. Yeah. So that's how big of a win that is for Zane and Rory Barker. That's not even their number one yeah. mixed team. Right. That's your yeah. third and fourth round picks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know what, I mean, what's your thoughts on it? Like, do you, how do you feel about it? I think MLP I, is bugged. achieving. I sound what? A little bit bugged. Not bugged. It's just, it's, it's interesting because like nothing goes as you think it would go in yeah. MLP. Yeah. Um, all the matches are close, which I personally don't like. It makes it fun. It makes it entertaining for fans and spectators, yeah. but I don't think it rewards the better team. I think the better team should win most of the time. And in my opinion, I think MLP, they're not going to win most of the time. Do you, do you think MLP is more watchable though? It becomes more watchable. As like I think fan. for the lay person who doesn't know much about pickleball. Lay? lay? Well, wow. is that the right terminology? Yeah. It's get, like the average that. folk who yeah. doesn't understand yeah, pickleball. I get what you're saying. Um, if they don't understand pickleball, I think for sure they would enjoy watching it more. Yeah. Uh, but for the players who actually play it, um, I think they prefer the traditional style. Yeah, that makes sense. By the way, did you know there's only one team that went winless? Uh, Atlanta? Yeah. 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 Who are the yeah. last three? Utah. Okay. Dallas, Dallas and Atlanta. And but here Brooklyn's four. That's us. Yeah. But here's the, inter- this is the interesting part about this is if you look at the net games, mm-hmm. right? Like Dallas was minus four. Mm-hmm. Utah was minus three. You guys were only minus two. Oh man. We could have been, we could have been through our pool. Yeah. Ranchers were my, were only minus one and Columbus was only minus one. And those yeah. teams all only had one or zero. Or zero win. Well, Atlanta was minus eight. They yeah. just got blasted. But it's just interesting that how close. It's kind of interesting, like what you said, how close. And like Columbus went one and two, mm-hmm. and they were minus one in games, and they actually won fifty point three percent. So they actually were on the plus side of the points, yeah. and still only went one and two. Yeah. I mean, these matches are so close. I mean, even Atlanta, their points. They lost eight matches. And their points were actually higher. Their percentage of points one yep. was actually higher than Dallas. Yeah. To me, and I've said this a lot, I just think almost all of the games are so close. And that's yeah. what MLP wants. They want close games. They want dream breakers. It's exciting. But it's yeah. like, if you guys want close games, why don't you just start at 2020 and go to 25 points? Yeah, for sure. It's like almost the flip of a coin for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So. I agree. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting if MLP will make any changes to the rules Mm -hmm. to create a different competitive balance. Yeah. I mean, I, to myself, I don't know if this is a proper analogy, but I compare it to kind of March madness. March madness is so fun because why, why is it so fun? Why is March madness fun? Because of buzzer beaters and buzzer beaters, um, upsets. Cinderella there hasn't stories. been anybody who's predicted 100% the outcome, right? Yeah. Because it's unpredictable. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's similar with MLP, yeah, but for sure, I don't think it rewards the, the time people spend into uh, practicing to looking for partners to all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a, it's, I think there's a time and a place for it. I think if we could do four to five MLP events a year, mm-hmm. so much fun, but you don't want to do 12 and 12. Exactly. Like if you had to do this 12 times. Yeah. That'd be, get really good. It loses luster. I think it loses its luster well, and it'd be very draining emotionally. What if you did a season long thing where you played like, like for example, mm-hmm. there's 24 teams now, not 12. Yep. Okay. And you guys are in, you know, four different groups, mm-hmm. right? So there's six teams in a pod and you play the other five teams. And you play them during PPA events and you just play one match. Yeah. I don't know if I'd like or that or before not. Or I mean, we haven't done it yet. And so I, yeah. I can't speak to so that. So say you play them on a Wednesday, yeah. you play one other team and that's yeah. it. So, I mean, it's an hour, 45 minutes, hour and a half. Yeah. I don't know. That'd be, and, to me, that'd be a little bit weird. Yeah. I see where, where they're wanting yeah. to go with that. But I don't but, think, but I don't think that's going to have the same energy of, yeah. of like what you just had. Yeah. And it's going to feel different. Yes. And 
I know that there's been talk of playing either before, like the Wednesday before or the Sunday after. Yeah, but the issue is you're still having to go out one or two days early. Well, that's what I'm it, saying. And playing the Sunday after, after you play a PPA event, is yeah. sounds even worse. Yeah. So I don't know yeah. what they'll do. I mean, I enjoy MLP. It's a lot of fun. It's fun because you see new matchups as well. Yeah. Um, you'll never see... Ben play with Eric in a PPA or or maybe you will. Um, but some of these other, (laughs) wow, Eric, my bad, Eric, maybe some of these other partnerships. (laughs) Yeah. Um, you just might not see. Yeah. All right. You would never see Ben play with Eric ever. You never see Ben play with me. Yeah. This is not charity. Yeah. We'll, we'll go, we'll go to that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go to questions. I mean, it was exciting. It was fun. Good for congrats to the squeeze. Still think that's, Oh my God. Their uniforms are awful though, by the way, let's talk about uniforms while you're pulling up questions. Yeah. Let's see if I can pull up. The uniforms were bad. Like Miami has great colors, the Mm -hmm. pink. Yeah. I I don't know why why you're wearing the blue. blue, Yeah. Yeah, It's so stupid. Like, like the hard eights have those pink shirts and they rock the pink. The pink looks good. Miami, I didn't understand that. The squeeze uniforms today, I good night. Like they look like they were literally should be on roller skates working in a fifties diner. Yeah. Like they they were hideous. And honestly, it, it felt like a distraction. Just look having to look at those. Yeah. I'm surprised Zane didn't have like a striped hat, you know, like <laughs> holding an ice cream cone. Like it was it was horrible. The little spinny thing on top. What are those called? Remember those? Like, <laughs> yeah. That's what it reminded yeah. me of. Um I, I did think that Columbus uniforms look decent. The new Aces logo is sick. Yeah. That that logo, yeah. that logo I really liked. Um, but for the most part, I think that some of these teams need, they need a stylist. Let me come in there and help. Clearly, you know, I mean, we got the pink. See? The Jimmy M hat. We're bringing it. Okay. All right. So we had a lot of questions. Um it's not pulling it up in its normal format, so hopefully we get to most of them. All right, we're going to try to knock these off fairly quickly because okay, this is a long it. one. Is Jimmy playing in any upcoming tournaments? No, I He's don't retired. think so. I, I, yeah, I mean, I used to play a lot of tournaments, and I don't know. I don't know if I love it. Maybe I will. Maybe, maybe somebody. If somebody asks me to play, I'll play with you. How about that? What are the next steps that need to be taken to grow pro pickleball as a spectator sport? So I think MLP is an example. We've talked about this before of uh, that. You can grow it as a spectator sport only because there was not any amateurs in MLP. Mm-hmm. Um, the team aspect I do think is a little bit more watchable, but my biggest thing, and they try to do this on the broadcast and I know it gets annoying to a lot of the, the hardcore fans, mm-hmm. but the biggest thing is educate. Yeah. And, and like, I know it gets annoying and I know that Mish today was like, so what happens is, and she's talking like people are in fourth grade, mm-hmm. but you have to, because you're on ESPN too. Yeah. People don't understand the sport and you want to get new fans. So you have to educate. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is, is, and this is Steve Kuhn's vision is you get a paddle in everybody's hands, get them out playing. You play once you play twice. You're going to be hooked. Yeah. Agreed. Um, Trey Young was there. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah. Did you meet him? No, I, I, well, yeah, I was playing when he was there. You think he's sad that his team was so bad? I mean, <laughs> he doesn't like, care. It's like his real Atlanta team. He doesn't care. Awful. Um, I met not a famous basketball player, but somebody that played for like the Lakers or Warriors, and I didn't know who he was. I was a little bit embarrassed. What was his name? Uh, Cook, I think is his last name. Quentin Cook or Brendan Cook. I don't know. And you didn't know? I didn't know him. And you were embarrassed? A little bit. Was he there at Trey Young? Um. Maybe he wasn't there with him at the moment, but okay. Um, let's see. Nice speaking Spanish with you in Atlanta. So I speak, I try to speak Spanish. And so there was this guy that's uh, from Spain that I was speaking to. Did you speak Spanish to Tardio when you played together? Um, just the curse words at him. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. He said, no freeze at 18. Is that horrible? Can the best raise to the top with this format? Um, me personally, I don't like what the new rule is, the getting rid of the freeze. It makes, I mean, before it was already insanely close, but now it's even closer than before. Yeah. I'd be curious to look at the numbers on that. Some smart guy run these numbers. They claim that the better team still comes out on top, but I, I, I don't believe that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Is Tyler's hair a mullet or a rat tail or both? I don't know. What is it? I think it's good. I don't know. It's kind of a combo, I guess. You got something right here. Oh, Oh, it's kind of a combo. I was about to flick his hat off. (laughs) I don't know what, I don't know what it is. Honestly, I don't, 
I don't know. I just go to the hairstylist and yeah, there a, say I something. Don't know what we call it. All right. Uh, Kuhn being minority owner in majority of teams, weird or not? Who asked that question? Uh, it's your boy. Oh, yeah. I think that's an in, that's interesting that he knows that. Um, they sent out an email. I don't know if it was public, but they oh, sent, did they? yeah, okay. at least to the players. Yeah. So I guess that I guess that there's there's a there was talk amongst the owners that basically what Steve Kuhn did, even though it pissed a lot of people off, mm-hmm. it did kind of work in a way. It's kind of a weird thing, but in the end, it did kind of work. The players got paid. <laughs> they merged. And so it's kind of like that. you know. And he got all of his shares diluted, so it's kind of like addition by subtraction type of thing. Mm-hmm. And so they actually asked any of the owners, and I think that it's going to be optional, but maybe the email says it's not. But they can give Steve Kuhn between 2 to 3% of mm-hmm. each team. Yeah. And so he'll be a minority owner on all the teams, most of the teams, uh, most of the teams, yeah. whoever opts into that. Mm-hmm. Um, as like a weird <laughs> or not. Yeah. I think it's kind of interesting because it's like, you're pissed at the guy and then I like, go, oh, now I gotta give you 2%. Well, actually I guess it kind of did work. I don't know. I think if these teams are worth $20 million, like they expect them to be, mm-hmm. it's a big chunk of change to give Steve Kuhn yeah. as a thank you for lying to you, but also for pulling it off, I guess. <laughs> so yeah. How to get your duper score up to do pro level tournaments when no one wants to record them. So that that's huge because in golf, it's like the people that like they play a bad round, so they don't put it in. Mm -hmm. Right. So the best thing to do is go play tournaments where they have to, where they have that are duper sponsored tournaments, go play tournaments where they put it in your duper. And then, and then you have to, and find ones that and don't, and don't just look for like the ones that like, you know, are, are double elimination, mm-hmm. go find some round Robin ones. Then you get more matches recorded. Uh, why does all Sean high five with the back of his hand? I don't know. It's weird. He misses half the time too. I didn't so, notice that. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he like, I have no idea. Thoughts on the other team not freezing when you get to 20? Do you like it or not? Uh, we, I answered that. I don't like yeah. it. Jimmy, do you, do you care? Do you like it as a spectator? Um, I mean, it makes them closer. It makes them more exciting. Exciting. The funniest thing was people, so stupid, was people like in the chats being like, oh my gosh, this is so confusing. It's like, no, it's less confusing. Yeah. It just means that on game point, you're frozen. You have to serve. That's it. That's all it is. Yeah. The only thing I don't love was when it would be like 2020 mm-hmm. and like the other team would, would serve and then, you know, say they missed a serve at 2020. Now it's 2120. Yeah. And I think that was like a big advantage when you got to for sure, you know? Yeah. So do we read this question or <laughs> no, but no. it's funny. Uh, Drew Collins, your question is funny, but we're not going to stoke the, f- the flame. No. Uh, do you think MLP will cause more rivalries and bad blood? I think at the moment there's so much up in the air that there's no uh, direction on anything quite yet. And so I think that is TBD. You think we'll see more trades this year in MLP? There's nothing on the problem is there's nothing on the line. Mm-hmm. Like there's no relegation. There's money and there's pride. And I think that that matters, but there's zero relegation on the line. Mm-hmm. So if they go into free agency for 2024, right? Do you risk trading a player and pissing them off? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where now you're free agency and you want to be friends with everybody. Yeah. I think everyone's going to be on their best behavior. Yeah. Do I respond to that one? Um, Yeah, let's talk about it. We'll do it briefly. Has K-Mac beat you in singles? I think I retired against him. That's when I got injured. Oh. Um, when I rolled my ankle. Like if you played him 10 times, how many times did you beat him? I would think if I'm playing how I should, I'd probably beat him eight, eight times or so. He's a good singles player. He was really good in singles. Yeah, but. Yeah. yeah. So the question was, um, true or false, you are jealous. Number one, K-Mac beat you in singles. Oh, no, he did beat me one other time. Um, so we probably played four or five times, and I think I won two or three. One of those times he beat me is when I rolled my ankle. Um, and then number two, Tyson rakes in the money. Tyson for sure rakes in the money. Yeah, good for him. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's nobody's yeah. hating on that. Good for him. Everything I've said about Tyson has never been about his quality of play. 
his skill level or anything like that. It's always been about personality or off court antics or characteristics. Let, like literally let him, uh, somebody said that, that we keep bringing him up on 25% of our, that's false. Yeah. And that we do it because it gets us clicks, but I don't think people understand that we're the, we don't need, yeah, we get our clicks. I'll just say that. All right. We'll move on. Um, what is the truth? Why Hayden did not play? Be honest. Because um, he had his 18th birthday party. Exactly. He got his um his he lottery went to ticket. Magic City. Yeah, he was at the Cheetah Club. Yep. Yeah. Um, and he just went hard. Yeah. He went so hard that night. He he was wearing his sunglasses. Well, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. He's like, I am so glad that I got this knock around <laughs> deal right now. So my mom doesn't see my bloodshot eyes. <laughs> Hayden went ham. Yeah. No, Hayden's great. Love him. Um he he says I, I was not there. He said he had a migraine and he was puking, throwing up. So. Yeah, I get that. I text him and he. I think he was definitely sick. And, and once you're it was out, hot. It was hot in Atlanta. I think a lot of people were dehydrated. Well, and once you're out, you yeah. can't come back. Exactly. Once you're so out, he, you can't come back. Because he felt better the next day, right? Yeah. Was he on your bench the next day? Yeah. And he was fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once you're out, you can't come back. So so listen, if you know Hayden, Hayden is a competitor. Hayden is fiery. Hayden's not pulling out unless he absolutely has to. Um, and I'm sure he tried to play through it the first match, mm -hmm. you know? And so, yeah, it sucks. It's, it's kind of bad luck, but he'll be back. Big H will be back. And Dude. he's 18 now, ladies, his Tinder profile is officially legal. So go swipe on Hayden. <laughs> Did anyone talk about how much they hated being on a team with someone this weekend? Not that I directly heard. You probably heard more than me. Did you hear that? No, I think, I mean, I think there's definitely personality issues. Yeah. There's a lot of players. So, so there's this thing in MLP where the players that are first round picks, they've always been kind of able to select their own teams mm -hmm. along with kind of being the captains. Yeah. And that seems to be kind of one of those things that's just evolved over time. And there's a lot of other players this last MLP that seem to kind of step up as like they were going to be the captains. Yeah. And I think it, there was, I heard from a few different teams that they weren't loving that these players were kind of trying to take control. I would say one big thing with MLP is they are getting better at it, but not only do they need to look at the skill set of these players, they need to look at the chemistry between the yeah. players. I would honestly say yeah. the chemistry for sure. is better than somebody's upside. Well, their and, skill set. And, and there's different ownership groups that you mess with, right? Like, I mean, we can talk about the breakers, right? Mm -hmm. Their owners are very hands-on. Mm -hmm. They throw parties, barbecues. They go out to team dinners. They have multiple owners. There's three, four, five different owners. They're all there. They all show up. They're super hands-on. You know, you're going to hear from them on non MLP days. You're going to hear from them during the week. Yeah. You know, you're going to hear from them, you know, they're going to talk to you. They're going to see how you're doing. Like they're very hands on. Yeah. And that's great. Like, and that's huge for a lot of these players and they love it. And a lot of players want to play. Mm -hmm. And then there's other players that literally are like, like, I just want to show up and play and go home. Yeah. I don't want to go to these dinners. I don't want to do this. And it's just a different personality thing. And I think that does matter. Okay, we'll try to do three to five more questions. Is Spencer Smith Jimmy's boy? Dude, I know Spencer. Spencer's a stud. Like, I know him really well. He's a good dude. Um, he's definitely very fiery on the court. Mm -hmm. And his girlfriend clearly has his back and is willing to throw haymakers if she needs to. That's the <laughs> second time we've seen it. She's not scared. All right, watching MLP, you have clearly improved your game, Tyler. Is it just oh. from drilling? Oh. Well, I appreciate those comments. Um, I actually do Who not think that, that I... Is that Shelly? <laughs> no, it's not my mom. <laughs> um, I actually do not think that I played great uh, this last MLP. Um, I, I keep telling people I need another two months. I'm thinking January is when I'll start to feel really comfortable with my shots. Um, this last MLP, I didn't use yeah. hardly any of the shots I've been working on. Really? <laughs> All right, next, uh, biggest surprise and biggest disappointment at MLP. Um, we kind of talked about that. Any big surprises and letdowns or disappointments that you saw? Um, so I think that the big surprise was Rora Bacher. Uh -huh. I think that she was definitely an unknown. But if you watched her, like when her and DSQ played James and Anna mm -hmm. at TOC and they just crushed, yeah. you knew it was there. You yeah. knew the potential was there. And yeah, she's obviously been grinding. Um I think we're going to see more of that because here's the, here's the thing is, and we talked about this pre-draft, you know what you're getting from Jay and Callie and Elise, Yeah, you know who they are, right? 
and they're and they're solid players, but you know exactly who they are. Mm-hmm. At this stage of their careers, they're not going to show up and surprise you. Mm-hmm. Rachel, you didn't know. Yeah, she was a hundred percent upside pick. Tyra, we didn't know, and Tyra's stock obviously, like Tyra's a, <clears throat> probably a first or second round female now. Yeah, you know yeah. her stock is through the roof. Yeah, but when she was drafted in July, it was still an upside pick, mm-hmm. and it's such an upside pick. Miami took her in the third round, hoping, mm-hmm. and even people thought that that was a little bit of a stretch. Like she should have been a fourth round pick. Yeah, and so I think we're going to see more of that. How many mod balls has Jimmy eaten since the podcast started under or over 2000? That's a lot of mod balls. I'd be so sick, but I do like mod balls. All right. How long, uh, how long before they ban Jimmy from events? Because he always craps on everybody. Who do I crap? No one's going to ban me from events. <laughs> like, listen, pickleball players are not above criticism. They're not above like it's just like any other sport, right? Yeah. If a quarterback goes out and throws four interceptions, he's going to get freaking shit on. Yeah. That's what happens. <laughs> like that's that this is called sports. And if you're that sensitive, you shouldn't be a professional athlete. Most of the stuff I'll say most, cause there's some that isn't, but most of the stuff that we try to talk about here is fairly factual. Yeah. Like you're, if you play bad, like the, look today, we went through all the stats. We said Lauren this person- Stratman was bad. Okay. She was bad. There's no way to put it. She was bad. She got paid yeah. her first tournament since getting paid. She was awful. She yeah. was terrible. And it reflects on that. Like there's a lot of pressure on you. You're getting paid that kind of money. There's pressure mm-hmm. and she buckled under the pressure. It is what it is. James Ignatowicz, he got paid. Mm-hmm. He got paid a freaking bag of money. He, and he was terrible. Mm-hmm. And I think that when you have that amount of pressure on you, you're going to be expected to perform yeah. and you're not going to be above criticism. It's just like a, any other sport. If I'm in the NBA and I go sign a huge contract as a free agent and then I go out and I freaking shoot three for 18, mm-hmm. right? I'm going to get criticized and I deserve to get criticized. Is that it? Yeah, it's just it's just dumb. Pickleball players, like, sorry, but most not. pickleball players are uh, actually pretty fine. A lot of them actually message him saying, "Oh, what you said about me is pretty funny," or "This is like true, I have, yeah, is, like they they're yeah. not they're not they're not thin skinned like most of the, some people. Why do players act hard in MLP, but in reality, at other tournaments, have no personality? We actually hit on this earlier, but yeah. I fully fully agree with that statement. Yeah, it's a weird. It's um, somebody said, "Are you going to be working on your back end dinks?" A thousand percent. Um, if I can get <laughs> people are brutal, aren't they? Who yeah. runs a better tournament, MLP or PPA? I mean, I wouldn't consider MLP what they run right now tournaments. I mean, they're, they're more like events, I call them, and PPAs are more tournaments. So I don't think those are uh, comparable. And it's hard to compare, obviously, because there's zero. The the one thing with MLP, there's no amateurs running running side by yeah. side. So it, so it makes it a tough comparison. Yeah. Um, but what about from a player's perspective, who takes care of you better? Oh, um, it's hard to say, Um, like who has better. I mean, like you said, MLP only focuses on the pros. And so they really cater to players lounge. Yeah. Like nicer. Yeah. For the most part, most of the time. Food. Did you get subway or something else? Actually the food, this last one wasn't that great, but normally it's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Food. What about accommodations? Yeah. It's based off a team or what? Both. Both. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, why, why wasn't Stax rude fine for his post game comments? Well, we don't know if he was or wasn't cause that was literally one or two days ago. And normally it takes them one to three weeks to issue a fine. Um, some of it was in Spanish, so <laughs> I don't know if they'll yeah. find him for cursing in another language. Yeah, maybe they, yeah. Uh, somebody said, how was it playing with Catherine? Incredible. I, I think she is the number two player uh, in women's. She's super solid, really good, a um, lot of fun. What do you think about Annalie finishing so poorly? I mean, I think last season she didn't do all that well either. It's just MLP is a different format. It makes some lower level players look great, some higher level players not look good. Do you think that, like, Annalie, um, do you think that this will go back to where, you know, men will be picked before women? I, like I don't valuable? know if there will be a set set way for that. I think it'll just be kind of ran, not random, but there will be some thrown in there, some not. But like, I mean, if we look at the stand, player standings, right? Who are the? I mean, I guess it's hard because Anna Bright was picked. They traded. Didn't the squeeze trade down? Yeah, trade up. 
Yeah, there was a trade in yeah. there. Yeah. So they took Anna. So they ended up, you know, that ended up working out for them. Yeah. Um, and they ended up winning it. But the drive took Julian, Ben, Riley, Fed. So there's only one female that was taken in the first round that made the playoffs. All right. We're oh, going to Leia, do three Leia. more questions. Um, do you get nervous before a tournament? So there's been maybe two times that I can recall in pickleball that I've gotten nervous. One of them was in the super final of the first season. Um, Your whole team was nervous. Yeah. And it was just weird because, I mean, I wasn't crazy, crazy nervous, uh, but that was the most nervous I've been uh, just because the winners of that each got around $60,000. That's the most any tournament has ever paid out. Is that wild? That, it's like one shot that, you hit. If is, you pop it up two inches too high, you're toast. Isn't that wild though? Now that yeah. how much money you're making that like 60,000 is nothing. Yeah. Not 5 million. Like, like honestly, I probably wouldn't have even shown up that day. If exactly. It, had I known, had I known, had you known you wouldn't have even gone. You'd been like, Psh, I'm good. After the ladies lost 21, five, would you have just left? Probably. Yeah. yeah. You're like, I don't need this. How come Jimmy always says he's going to come to an event then doesn't come to an event? Because I, have I think a real... you're afraid of planes. No, I have a real life. That's why if I didn't have a real life, I would, I would listen. I don't play pickleball for a living and I don't get paid to do any of this for a living. And so if I did, then sure, I would come to events. <laughs> you got to make a little sacrifice if you want to, if you want to get went, paid. I've, I've been to events. Yeah. Yeah. Have I've you? To, yeah. I've <laughs> Have been you? to plenty of events. San Clemente, were you there? I, Atlanta, were you there? I need people to. Let's go. Like, yeah. All right. Last question. Has Federico Staxford solidified himself as the second best player? Okay, stop. I love Fed. Fed does watch the podcast. Fed actually gets in the chat sometimes on the mm -hmm. premiere. Fed is not the number two player. Do I think that Fed has solidified himself as top five and he's getting better and better and better and better? Yes. Top five? I think he's top five. Really? Yeah. I think he's, I think he's, I think I would probably say Ben Riley, J Dub, Dylan, J -Dub, Dylan, and Fed. Over Matt? Yeah. I think Fed's past Matt. Really? Yeah. Matt's going to have some words. Well, if Matt ever watches podcasts or uses the internet, he might see this, but he doesn't. So <laughs> the yeah. only thing I'll say with him is, I mean, MLP is hard. It's to me, it's really hard to gauge somebody's, uh, yeah. Talent. Well, and I'm not saying that just based off. But look MLP. at Pablo. Pablo's done extremely well with fed. And then this last tournament, he didn't do so well with somebody else who he, wasn't his normal partner. Yeah, I agree. But, fed, but, and, but then you go look at fed, right? And fed went eight and three. And he sure. finished six. Tyson's a good doubles player though. And he played with Tyson, but he did get to play with Tyson and Tyra. Yeah. Like it's hard. So yeah. Where Pablo had to play with Hunter and Simone. Yeah. No doubt. He's good. No doubt. Um, I'd say he's five. I'm going to say he's five fed. I'm going to say you're five, even though fed I've heard that you didn't quite have our back on some stuff that we've talked about and you pushed the narrative that didn't exist, but that's okay. You know, what does not hurt? right now my feet after three days of after three days my feet do not hurt at all really a acacia. lot of it has to do with the shoe yes. acacia check them out super lightweight super comfortable can, can i love the colors to like roll it for like your plantar fasciitis too like no it's just it plastic it'll smash oh, okay. uh use code kotc at acaciasports.com yep. uh for your next paddle backpack stop that sorry Wrong, balls wrong anything, podcast wrong podcast <laughs> Uh, balls, anything like that, go to picklershop.com, use code KOTC. Crown Pickleballs, we love them. Check them out. Crownpickleballs.com. Mod balls, we also love these. Yeah. Super healthy, delicious, nutritious, yeah. and they fill you up. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking, this whole Steve Kuhn thing is so wild to me about giving him equity. Uh-huh. Like it's so it's such a weird phenomenon. Like it'd be like if your wife cheated on you. But then in the end, it made your marriage better. So you're like, hey, listen, you're right. That's a weird analogy. Well, I'm just saying it's weird to me. Like, it's a weird, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain her. Maybe she cheated and got pregnant. You're like, oh, I wanted another kid anyways. Thank you. <laughs> I can't have kids. I don't know. It's just a weird thing to me that they're like, you did this, but hey, let us give you some equity in our team. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Anyways, I'm not We're a signing off. That's why I'm not rich. Thanks, guys. Play it. Is it playing? Yeah. Uh -oh.